not be afraid. May the force be with you. It's showtime. The storm is approaching. I can fight them. I'm strong enough now. No one is stronger than them. We can beat them. Hola chicos, ¿cómo están? How are you? Ah, yeah. oh, you got to practice your Spanish now that you're global. <laughs> Are you ready to do the interview in Spanish? Sí. Un poquito. Um, Jackie, let me start with you. I mean, you surprised everybody at Star Wars Celebration when you guys uh, show that the show was now going to be global and that we were going to travel around countries and continents, and we were going to see how different uh, countries see Star Wars. How was that for you when you saw the reaction of the fans going crazy? It was a relief. <laughs> no, we were very, I mean, we were so happy with the response that season one got, because I think there's just such a strong connection between anime and Star Wars with the Kurosawa, the samurai film influence and so much great fan art that you see in that style um, that people, em they embraced it. And so when we told them, okay, now we're gonna move on and do this. It's almost like when a, you know, a singer does something new with their music and some people like it, some people don't, but it, it was so great to have, it's what seems like the majority of our fans come along for the ride. And James, let me ask you, was it almost like an impossible task just to choose eight or nine uh, countries or, and studios? Uh, yeah, it was hard. <laughs> it was a very hard decision. I mean, look, we, we in truth, there are a lot of amazing animation studios that as fans we wanted to call and wanted to work with. And we've really been impressed with so much of the, the animation community in general over the last number of years. So, yes, figuring out which ones we wanted to call, there's a, we can only be, do so many, it was a challenge. Um, we wanted to make sure there was a, a, a very good mix of kind of the known studios that, that you know, were storied. Um, but we also wanted to use this platform as an opportunity to show some of the newer studios that are up and coming, some of the studios that, um, you know, or more unexpected, but are there going to be the known studios of tomorrow? Um, so that that was really a big part of it is making sure you had an aesthetic balance, but also a balance between the known, uh, the beloved, and the studios that we really think are doing great work that hopefully uh, will, will uh, you know, be the known and beloved very soon. I'm sure that you guys now are dealing with with when is when is my country next? <laughs> yes. It's true. I know. Are you from uh, Mexico? I'm from Mexico. So when is Mexico next? <laughs> I know. Believe me, I wanted Mexico there. on this anthology. I really, really did. I. It just. We ran out of spots, and there's but there's so much incredible animation coming out of Mexico. So I yeah, can't yeah. wait to do a, a, a short from or something from Mexico. If you need recommendations for studios, let me know. And also, yeah. I mean, I, I spell Giovanni with a J, so I can be part of the of the, the J, J crew. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that was> great. <laughs> uh, and no! You there? Hold it. <gasps> and just uh, you guys said at Star Wars Celebration that there's a renaissance for animation. Uh, and that some of the best work is being done in the medium. What do you guys mean by that? Oh, I, I think, um, you know, I'll say Guillermo del Toro has been speaking a lot about this uh, recently when he going around talking about Pinocchio and that that animation is for very broad audiences. I think for a long time animation was bucketed as that's kid stuff, right? And I think uh, for a long time, and I think George Lucas also saw this very early on when he created Clone Wars, is that animation is an amazing medium to tell stories that sometimes you cannot tell with uh, in live action. Um, and 
you could just do amazing, amazing expressive things with, with animation. Um, so it really does feel like there's a renaissance that, that um, people are catching on. Um, I think the, the work that, that all of us are doing on Visions, um, that our colleagues are doing at Lucasfilm Animation, we are inspired by stuff other studios are doing, uh, you know, um, on other shows, you know, be it Arcane or uh, Love, Death and Robots. So it, it's I think we're all inspired by each other. Um, and it's great to see because I think it's making us all raise our game also in a way. Yeah. Us animation fans know that you can tell beautiful adult stories and stories for all the for the entire family. And it doesn't have to be just for kids, right? Uh, and Visions is one of those examples. I mean, there's some of the stories are like just for the entire family, like uh, I am your mother. I love that one. Oh my God. <laughs> But then you have to so, some stories that get so dark. <laughs> but they're all human stories, that's why. I mean, yeah. animation is filmmaking, right? I mean, uh, honestly, what Josh was saying is dead on. I, I don't think we look at it as this is for kids. This is that we look at it as it's, a, it's filmmaking. It's a form of cinema. Um, and the way cinema works at its best is when it's telling human stories, character stories that, that cause you to reflect on your own life or cause you to understand the plight of another. Um, and to see characters deal with complex situations gives you a sort of code for light living, right? And so each of these stories is deeply human. Each of these stories is anchored in, in having something to say from their creators. And so, you know, animation happens to be the form that these filmmakers are working in, but at the end of the day, they're, they're telling stories about uh, humanity. We cannot choose where our calling takes us. Only whether or not to answer. Uh, one of the threads that I saw throughout the different shorts and that the different creators talk about on the panel at Star Wars Celebration was that it was about oppression. And I'm sure that when you guys started Visions three years ago, four years ago, the world wasn't what it is today. Mm. And even, this, even even the second season wasn't where the world is today. We were dealing more with COVID than everything yeah. that is happening right now. So mm -hmm. how does it feel that now the world and the oppression that we're seeing here in the United States, but in many war in many uh, countries, of course, it's reflecting what we see in Star Wars. It's crazy. I know it's a little too close, isn't it? <laughs> but I think that's why this can be so meaningful. I think that's why these stories are so meaningful because it's we're, it's something we're seeing in our world today and these cultures are experiencing it you know we thought it was just us in the u.s because of the craziness we've gone through in the past you know six years but it's everywhere like you said unfortunately there's corruption and oppression and the you know the squashing of of the little people and people making the wrong choices for the wrong reasons for power and greed and selfishness. So, I mean, I think what we hope is these sh these stories are stories of hope for people and show that, you no, know, stay on the right track, stay, stay true, do the right thing, and there's hope. There's hope that we'll all come out of this. That's the word, hope. But Star Wars is always about hope and finding the light at the end of the darkness of the universe. Yes. Yeah. And uh, my time is almost over, but I do have a quick final question. How do you guys, like some of the shorts, I think transcend and like people want to see more for from them. Like I love the one from the twins. I want to see more from that from season one. What are you going to do? Why are you guys thinking of doing with those shorts that people want to see more of? I think it's great to hear the fan feedback and we're always thinking about them. Um, a lot of these characters in volume one and volume two, they still live on in our, in our minds. And I think that's part of what makes Star Wars so special is that you can tell these complete stories and then imagine these characters continuing on and having adventures. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We right now we're hoping that these characters in volume two really resonate with fans the same way the characters in volume one did. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. Well, I'll do my I'll do my best to share 
the amazing season because it's fantastic guys thank you so much for sharing the show with us uh you guys are heroes to my eyes of course i love animation i love your work so i can wait for what comes next and please keep doing this because it's amazing oh, thank, thank you, you giovanni thank you. we hope we can yeah.